to do the nine at nine. It's really gonna sweep. Nine completely different stories from assorted categories. Nine at nine. We're gonna try to get through this and hopefully Robin won't see. <laughs> I love it. Oh, that's right, great. Well, sure, number nine. It's always good to be reminded that goats in Morocco can climb trees. This oh. Is, what? Did this I is, know this? Wow. Basically a Darwinian talent that the goats developed in order to reach the argan fruit. Argan is an oval shaped and a little bigger than an olive. Inside it is a fleshy pulp that the goats love to eat. After the goats eat the part of the fruit they like, they end up spitting up or getting rid of that nut part, and the nuts are really valuable. So women's co-ops in Morocco go through a process that extracts the oil from that nut, and that's used in a lot of different ways. You may have seen it as a kind of luxury cosmetic in skin creams and shampoo. Hmm. How do they get down? Do they you climb get... down? They don't. They, they, all, oh, they all hold hands and jump. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, they're walking backwards. Yeah. Yeah. Their dad comes down and goes like this. <laughs> <laughs> Jump on, Billy. <laughs> uh, number eight, the It Fashion Boys know this already, but now all of us regular slugs can also be on trend, oh. especially this holiday season. It's all about, is it brooches or brooches? Brooch. 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 It's a brooch. That's what it's called. Uh, the pearl necklaces and the statement rings as well. Wow, that's a lot. Here's how to wear this stuff if you're just a regular fella. One piece at a time. Uh, try a bejeweled pin on the lapel of your jacket or try it on a button-down shirt. Ooh, that pops. If you're a little more bold, a pearl necklace peeking out of your sweater is just super sexy. Uh, and if you've uh, got the riz to pull it off, try a sparkly ring on your pointer finger. Or you could try a gold chain with an Italian horn and a couple of buttons on it. Never goes out of style. Never goes out of style. <laughs> uh, number seven, you're not ready to break up, but you could use some time apart. Maybe it's time to take a break. Oh, no. Relationship uh -oh. experts say it could be the perfect way to give you and your partner a fresh perspective. Perfect time of year, Larry. Yeah, they have some <laughs> tips. <laughs> My wife reminds me all the time. They say make a plan and lay things out before you take that break. Will there be zero contact, limited communication? Can you date other people during your time apart? How long do you want your breakup to last? Uh -huh. Finally, what are your expectations? Lots of couples benefit from this time away from each other. Some use it to work on themselves, find some clarity, or yeah. it doesn't work, <laughs> yeah. and you break up. Sure. Well, there you go. Win-win. This, this was the issue, though, with on Friends, yes. right? And yes. there wasn't any community. You got to lay the groundwork on what it's good for. But really, you're just breaking up. Let's just call it what it is. Yeah. Right. Right. Or we can That's really great. say what it is, but we won't say it. <laughs> <laughs> I never say, speaking of a break, oh, well, here's the classic clip you're you talking go. about, Larry. Oh, yeah. How about that? I mean, my mom never thought this would work out. <laughs> she was all, once a it's cheater, true. always a, a cheater. cheater. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, I just wish we hadn't lost those four months. But if time was what you needed just to gain a little perspective. <laughs> we were on the break! Coffee house? You bet. And for the record, it took two people to break up this relationship. Yeah, you and that girl from the coffee place, which yesterday you took full responsibility for. I didn't know what I was taking responsibility for, okay? I didn't finish the whole letter. What? I fell asleep. You fell asleep? <laughs> it was 5.30 in the morning, and you had rambled on for eight oh, no. pages. Oh, boy. There's no getting back together now. But there eventually, is. they did get yeah. back together at the very last episode. Yeah, but they got a lot out of their system before they did that. <laughs> yeah. yes, One they of them did. did. Yeah. All right, number five. These are engineers at General Motors before software for drafting was invented. Going back to the earliest days of cars, engineers would sometimes have to spread papers and themselves over the floors of wide open rooms in order to draft wow. the designs for the engines mm. and bodies of cars. 
The modern age of drafting came around 1963 when a program called AutoCAD was developed. What's that lady doing there at a hey. drafting table? <laughs> hey! Jeez. Uh, it's a game changer for the engineers and architects and all sorts of others, but before these engineers, uh, were, they were basically artists because their drawings and renderings of what was to be manufactured was uh. so important. Hmm. I wanted to see if that lady popped up again, and I didn't think that was right. She was getting coffee, that's why she was <laughs> She was cleaning the, the table, Robin. <laughs> yeah, she, she. Uh, see? Yeah. Uh, number four, have you ever wondered what space smells like? No. That's a good question. That is a great question. That is a great and question. This, these are the things my mind always is wandering about. Yeah, you are a party. The best description <laughs> could very well be metal meets burnt meat. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh. Astronauts don't catch a whiff of anything until they get back to Earth and remove their helmets and spacesuits. And NASA officials say they usually notice the smell when they open the airlock doors. It's been compared to hot metal, burnt meat, burnt cakes, spent gunpowder, and welding metal. No one has directly smelled space and lived to tell the tale, uh -huh. since direct exposure to that air will kill them. Yeah. Huh. So where does that odor come from? Scientists think it may come from oxygen floating around the International Space Station, and the sun's ultraviolet rays split the oxygen molecules into atoms, and the atoms may cling to space gear and airlock walls, or some say it could be the smell of dying stars. Mm. Uh, those are all just theories. Mm. Interesting. Number three, look at this. It's a treadmill on wheels. Or call it a walking bike. These are made in the Netherlands, which is kind of the bike capital of the world. This is a hybrid bike. It has a battery that helps you move along as you pedal. You can go 20 miles an hour on this thing. This battery will uh, last about 50 miles. Google a company called Lop Fit to find them. They cost $2,500. Do that. Look at that. Mm. What do you think, Robin? I like it because I uh, I like walking. I don't like riding the bike. Yeah. And I could get further on the bike, but... Uh, you have the balance for an apparatus like this, the, you think? That could be the question, yeah. but it looks like they might have an option for some... Training, training wheels. wheels. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like there's room for two. Yeah, mm -hmm. oh yeah, that'd be fun. <laughs> All right, number two, here's a very specific thread that someone found on Twitter. A guy got a little obsessed with the chairs at frozen yogurt shops. He noticed that there's a certain kind of late 2000s aesthetic there, so he tried to find as many as he could. Check out Evan Collins 90 on X. These are all frozen yogurt hmm. chairs. Boy, they are all the, like, uh... Yeah, it's interesting. Hmm. I the way they'd all be the same. It's interesting. Yeah, you remember when frozen yogurt first came around? Oh. Yeah. Everybody thought Life changing. Like, oh. Right. I thought there were no calories it at all. Like, I thought yeah. we were eating healthy ice cream. I was like, this is it. This yeah. 28 ounce frozen yeah. yogurt is going to do nothing. <laughs> like a ton of toppings all over it. That's right. It's perfect. All right, number one, Paul Simon has written so many great songs, but there's one that he wrote that he absolutely hates. It's called the 59th Street Bridge oh, yeah. Song, also known as Feeling <laughs> Groovy. So maybe it makes sense that someone as corny as Liberace would cover it, and it makes oh. even more sense that he's accompanied by some singers they called the Young Folk. Wow. Here it is. Oh, dear. Young folk? No. <laughs> I, just, I, I just read like, what's in the prompt. Like, oh, oh here it comes. Hey man, you're looking wild. Oh, oh. You're gonna be a flower child. Yes, join the gang and sing along. We got a song for feeling groovy. Oh boy. Oh no. Mm -hmm. Hello, young folk. What you shaking? I gotta try that scene you're making. Liberace's turning on. Doodly doo doo, feeling groovy. Yeah, now we're kicking. 
Pick it up a notch. Oh, more young folks. Oh, <laughs> oh, please let them dance. Please let them dance. Oh. Mm. Oh. Oh. Yep. I know, right? That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, Lee's going to break it down now. What? Oh. <laughs> we can move. Oh, yes. Paul Simon's driving up to that 59th Street bridge, so he can jump. <laughs> wow. Oh, she was only 43. Yeah, it looks like about 60. And those young folks. Feeling groovy. Ooh. I'll be appreciated our girlfriend a lot more after this. Yeah. Wowie, that was a good nine at nine. <laughs> wow. <laughs> We're going to try to get through this, and hopefully, Robin won't see. <laughs> Robin. <laughs>